Good morning, everyone. It's 11.30, almost 11.30 Eastern. The East Coast of America, episode 142 of The Glow. We have a little glow coming right there on the right side for you, those of you that are listening on the playback, on the podcast, or SoundCloud, or iTunes, or wherever you're listening. You won't be able to see that, but those are on Facebook Live with me live right now. You can see the light. You can see me. You're going to be able to see Ash Ruiz soon, too, dear, dear friend of mine. And our featured guest today, my name is Brian Pierre Grossi, author of The Big Glow in the Wild and Now, life coach extraordinaire, retreat facilitator. So happy, so blessed to be with you. Um, speaking of retreats, we have a couple of retreats coming up I want to tell you about. Um, April 20th to the 22nd, so that's really soon, in <clears throat> one of my favorite places in the world where I call home. Welcome, Jane. Welcome, Roxana. When you're entering, please share where you're from. I love hearing where you're from. Hit the heart button, the wow button. Thank you for for being here. So April 20th to the 22nd, Big Low Retreat, just out, out, outside Asheville, North Carolina, beautiful spot. Um, still some still some spots left for that, though it's mostly full. So you'll see a link for that. And then we have a retreat in Italy, a seven-day retreat. Really excited about that in Italy in June, June 23rd to the 29th. Um, really, really excited about that. So um, Annie will be with me doing yoga. Um, it's a beautiful spot. You can see the link there to that, to register for that. We have four spots left for that. And the personal coaching is is happening on an ongoing basis. So if you want personal coaching with me, message me and we'll we'll make that happen. So I'm excited about today's episode. I'm excited about what's been opening, what's been happening, the way we've been um, connecting here and the energy that's here has been a uh, really which good blessing. Oh yes, and we have, we're working on a retreat in Sweden too, Stockholm, Sweden, June 17th with, uh, with Marie Lundqvist. Pronunciation may be a little bit off, but um, we're really excited to do some some movement, some embodiment in Stockholm. So that's almost official. So, so look for that. And Jessica's from Sweden. Welcome, Jessica. Ash is here. Welcome, Ash. Going to bring Ash on in just a few moments. Um, Ash is a busy guy today. He had a, another uh, show that he was on just before with a friend of ours, Jennifer Grace. So you can check that out too. I'm going to share this. Um, and I'm going to invite you to share this. So I'm going to share this to a couple spots here. Um, one spot is the Big Glow Community. Very special place if you're not there yet. If you're not a part of the Big Glow Community yet. Um, you can be. Anybody can be. Just, uh, just add yourself to our Facebook group. And then one more spot, it disappeared. There we are. One more spot, I wanna share it. Yeah, welcome Jessica. Welcome everybody that's joining us. It's so fun to, to share something live. I feel like there's very few things that are, that are live these days. Everything is kind of pre-arranged, pre-recorded pre, you know, like, um, engineered beforehand. So, um, there's something about sharing it live and then being able to watch it on the playback too. This format is kind of unique and, uh, I really appreciate it and enjoy it. I think it's, um, it just adds another element. It just adds another element of what's what's possible as another element of kind of excitement of energy of um of aliveness so feel free to comment at any time ask questions at any time um participate view you as as this is a co-creative experience and um Let's see if we can bring in a 
Welcome Ali, also known as Amana. So I sent you an invite, Ash. Great to be with you all. There he is. Hello there. So good to see you. So good to see you. Hello to everybody yeah. watching. Hello to everyone. Yay, yay, all yay, over yay. The world. All over the world. I was thinking and about hello to you. singing today, too. So, yes, that's totally in the realm of possibilities. <laughs> Everything possible. I know, it's Anything wonderful. Possible. <laughs> so good How to see you. This morning? I feel great. I feel great. I'm in a really cool um, uh, studio, like an artist gallery in close to Wynwood in, in Alapada. I just had an awesome interview with, my, with our, our dear friend, Jennifer Grace. And it just yep. feels so good. I love it. I get to connect with all, all, all my beloveds today. So it, I feel great. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, it's, so fun. <laughs> it's so fun. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing good, I'm a little sleepy, but I'm getting like, you know, it's like we inspire each other and the energy arises, awakens yes, inside it us. Does. The body is a vessel that can, is amazing in its ability to uh, be inspired by what's coming its way and be fueled and yeah. feel good. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. And hello, Amana. <laughs> I love you. I saw that Amana's on and everyone's saying hello, Edgardo and... Thank you, guys. What now, what's dream. fun is, unlike mm -hmm. some of my other recent guests who are like, is this on? Like, how does this work? <laughs> you actually have Facebook Live. You're a Facebook Live uh, aficionado like me. So you okay. use it a lot. You know, I do. Works. I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you, really are, can fun. you hear me? <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Can you hear me? Is this on? Is, is this working? <laughs> 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 I know the portal is on. We are we are streaming live into the hearts everywhere. So it's it's so great. I love this option. It's so so cool. Yeah. And that's one of the things I always feel is like beyond whatever the, the information that's shared or the, the facts or mm -hmm. the stories, it's like just coming together and the energy that, that arises in the sense of being present together. Yeah. Is really what's the most essential. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and how powerful. I mean, I'm just feeling into all the hearts that are watching right now and all the hearts that will be watching this and another now. Um, this, is, yep. this is quite the, the beautiful sacred geometric grid of, of, of power, doing some, some yummy stuff mm -hmm. to the planet today. So I'm so excited to, to do this. It's so cool. It's like when we're, when we're present. I always feel like that mm -hmm. when we're present together, where we're just like here, we're in this moment, we're always in this moment, but when we have an awareness of being in this moment yeah. together, it like activates, as you say, this like portal that just allows the magic and the miracles to arise, you know, and it's just like just yes. this infinite potentiality. That's yes, 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 yes. I love that. Like, even, you know, I don't mention the Bible often, probably never. You don't. Some, I don't. You're starting off with the Bible. <laughs> okay. But right now I'm just thinking of, of, of the whole, the, I, don't, I can't even know what, what it's called, the verse, the that says when two or more are gathered. And so it is, it is uh -huh. wonderful to tune in, to, to be present. It just turns up the volume of what is always present and turns up the magic of, uh -huh. of, of existence. So I'm so excited uh -huh. to see how this is just going to continue to, to, to reveal its, 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 its wonder in everyone's life as, as we continue. As soon as the interview is finished, you know, it just doesn't end. <laughs> It never ends. Never ends. Never begins. It never begins. It's always here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I so feel fun. like inspired to ask you this question. Oh yeah. Um, like yeah, because people people like tend to want to know this question uh -huh. when we start like a an episode, and I don't usually care so much about it because I'm not really well. You'll you'll see what I ask you the question. Okay. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> The question that I want to ask, because I think it will be fun in your case, uh -huh. how you respond is, who are you? 
<laughs> Isn't that such a wonderful question? It is such a wonderful question. It's a great question. <laughs> Yay. Goodness gracious. In my, in my experience right now, I am a presence of love, a presence of light. I am, am delighted to be here and to experience myself as you, as everyone watching, as the technology, as the planet, as the atmosphere, as, as, as everything. So it is such a joy. And my name is Ash Ruiz. I'm gay. I'm even <laughs> Italian. Um, I'm, I'm vegetarian. Uh, so it's like you can hold both. You can be vast and limitless and celebrate uh, the poetry of an appearance. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really, uh, that's really <laughs> profound is to recognize yourself as the infinite. Yeah. Um, I remember this Eckhart Tolle telling the story of he gave a, you know, a, a, a talk and um, some guy comes up to him at the end and they're having this, you know, this kind of conversation. And Eckhart says, I don't, I don't usually ask this question, but for some reason I asked him, um, you know, where were you, where were you born? And the guy gets like really like serious. And he's like, I was never born. <laughs> <laughs> and Eckhart's like, of course it's true. But in his case, it wasn't true. In other words, being like, he's like attached to this idea of like being this guy that's not born, you know? <laughs> um, so to be able to like hold both of those, that's like so beautiful, you know? It's like, yes, I'm the infinite. I'm the, the beginningless and the endless. And, you know, this is where I was born and this is who I am. Yes. And this is how I spend my life. Yes, and, yes. Yeah, that's... You yes. gotta not take this kind of like if you're taking the, yourself as the infinite like so seriously, then something's not quite quite right, right? It's like yes. it's not really the infinite. What's really fun the is to discover embraces everything. Yeah, discover that the infinite isn't the end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so there's that recognition of who you are. I'd love for you to like share, how did you recognize this sense of the infinite? How did you recognize, you know, who you really are on the absolute level of absolute essence? Yeah, well, I think I, think I had some, some really um, blessed, grace-filled moments that kind of like interrupted my usual experience of perception. Um, when I was uh, six years old, uh, my parents got divorced. Okay, I'll leave it on the outside. Awesome. Good to see you, brother. Thank you. Yay. I was just saying hello, um, bye to the gentleman that's allowed me to use the space. Uh, <laughs> so great. So, yeah, so I had these wonderful moments that interrupted my experience of perception, my experience of who I was, where I thought I was, what I thought the world was. Um, at six years old, my parents got divorced. My mother moved me and my brother to... Um, a small town. I was living in South Beach and all of a sudden I was moved to a small town in North Carolina and I was, I was angry and sad and, and depressed and, and I wanted my dad, I wanted my beach, I wanted my, my school, I wanted my friends. Um, I remember the first day of going to the new school, I was terrified and didn't want no one to look at me or see me or talk to me. I wanted to be invisible. So I was in breakfast in a cafeteria I got my breakfast. I looked for like the darkest, most obscure corner in the space. And I went and sat there, um, hyper vigilant. Uh, and, and I sat down and I opened up my, 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 my cereal and I got my spork. Don't you love the word spork? And I took a bite <laughs> out of my Frosted Flakes. Um, and I heard the loudest crunch in all of existence. It was a thunderous sound in my head. Them bitches were crunchy and loud. And I swore, you know, as a six-year-old, you're not, you, you, it's like imagination is everything. You know, it's like the, 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 the world of separation hasn't solidified as of yet. And so in that space of, of imagination, um, I imagine that when the crunch happened, that everybody,
Yes, we're back. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. 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 Yay! I'm still on the internet here. Just, okay. Awesome. Hi there. So I was saying that um, we're still on, right? Yep. Okay. You're froze, but I can hear um, you. You're froze. Okay. Hey, help us! Help us a good, a good frozen moment. <laughs> and so, um, I imagine that their ears popped off of their heads, and then the moment that I imagine their ears popped off their heads, I imagine that their ears were flying around the cafeteria. So hundreds of ears with little wings on them flying around the cafeteria, and then I somehow knew that all these ears had an intuitive knowing that they needed to rush to the center. And, and the moment that the ears rushed to the center, they created a one giant ear. And so the moment that I experienced the one giant ear, there was, um, I, I don't know how to, it's, I don't know if it was a pop, I don't know if it was a, like a bubble bursting, but I know that I was no longer the six-year-old boy experiencing the moment through the filter of a six-year-old mind. In other words, there was this open clarity. There was this uh, spacious presence. There was this ease, this peace, this love, this interconnectedness. And the way that my six-year-old brain um, uh, interpreted that, 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 that revelation was, you know, that if all these ears come together to make one big ear, that that was God's ear. And that every ear makes God's ear, every hand makes God's hand, every voice is God, makes God's voice. Um, that all of this together is God experiencing itself. And um, that was one of the moments. And then because of music, so then I called that the big ear. And, and, <laughs> and because I love music and, and listening, someone once asked me when I was seven, why do you love music so much? And I said, because it made listening real. And... I could sit, it was kind of like my own form of meditation. I can sit and listen to music and fall into listening and find such comfort and stability in listening. It was like there was no end to listening. And I would, I remember falling, if I fell deep enough into listening, it would subsume what I was listening to. And all that was present was, you know, it's kind of like the lines between, um, listening listener and that which you're listening to blurred and it's just this open presence and so i had the gift of having that experience and then at 16 in menudo i had a moment in machu picchu where just recognizing oh my goodness you know and as as you as as i matured you know at that moment in machu picchu what i called it was unshakable vastness i couldn't shake off the present i couldn't shake off the vastness it's like even if I, as I was living my everyday life, tying my shoe, having this conversation, that conversation, uh, experiencing this, being on stage, doing an interview, going to this, going to that, I couldn't shake off the vastness, the immediacy of this open listening presence. And, um, and Ash, let's, let's explain what Menudo is for some, uh, <laughs> some people that don't know who that is. So, so Men let's explain that too. That's so fun. Yeah. So Menudo was a Latin boy band. It started in 1971. The founder is a man named Edgardo Diaz. It started in Puerto Rico. And it was kind of like um, the first boy band of that kind, where it was just five guys dancing and singing, not playing any instruments. Um, and... And, uh, and yeah, it was, it was pretty huge. It was a, quite the phenomena all over the yeah. world. And I joined that group when I was 14 and was in it until I was 20. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're, you're essentially a, a teen celebrity at this time. Yes, in yes. Um, Bop, magazine, yeah. all them things. <laughs> and, you're, and you're traveling the world, you're touring the world, doing giant concerts, like arena, arena concerts, yeah, like big, big concerts. Yeah, we would do huge concerts. Mm -hmm. And then you're in, you're in Peru. Yeah, we were filming a video in, 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 in Peru. We went to yeah. Machu Picchu to film a video for a song called Bienvenidos al Nuevo Mundo, which means welcome to the new yeah. world which is fun because it was quite the welcome. <laughs> and you kind of like touch your feet down on the, on the ground there. Yeah. And you have this awakening yeah. experience. Yeah, it's kind of like all my descriptive frameworks, all my ideas, definitions, descriptions, identities, all time, all, all that can be described and named 
took the back seat and what was left in its place was just this clear, bright, aware presence, which I recognized, you know, that moment happening when I was six and that being what I would experience when I would do my, med my, my listening, when I would go into my listening meditations. I didn't even know the word meditation at the time, but when I'd have my listening moments, uh, it was just like, it kind of brought it all home because there was still a sense of it happened and it goes away. It happened and it goes away. And in this moment, it was, it was turned up the volume of it being more present than, than, than anything else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then there was a sense of like, I have to get that. I have to get that experience back. Yes, right? yes, yes, back. yes, 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 yes. So it was unshakable for, it for I about... Back to Machu, Machu Picchu. Yes, so I had this unshakable sense for about a year and a half. And then I it started, and then I started, couldn't, then I couldn't find it anymore. Then I was like really wound up in my identity and my, even the identity of being a spiritual being or an identity of, of vastness. Um, you know, I was still caught up in these points of view, these ideas. And that's when, uh, you know, when I left the group, my sole intention was to um, invest my time and my life into exploring um, what that was and how can I recreate it. <laughs> so I went back to Peru after my contract was up as a 21-year-old, 2021. Mm -hmm. And then what happened? You 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 came back to Machu Picchu, uh -huh. and you you're you're ready for the experience, right? You're uh -huh. ready to experience what you experienced last time. Yes, which many and people watching this can relate. You experience something so beautiful, so profound. You want to recreate it. You know, uh, sometimes it works. Second times it works. Third times it works. Fourth time it may work. But you know, when we use these strategies as a way to like feel some kind of sense of stability and well-being, what happens is that they no longer deliver the goods. So. Um, but I wanted to recreate this, this, this experience of presence and of nothingness and of, and of, and of, and of, and of vast, unshakable beauty. And uh, I, get to, I get to Peru, I get to Cusco, and I decide that this time I'm not going to do the helicopter ride to Machu Picchu. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, do the Inca Trail. I'm going to walk there. I'm going to be even more dramatic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to up, gonna up it to the next level. And, and doing the Inca Trail. And I remembered the, where it was uh, in Machu Picchu, where I had that experience. And I pretty much, you know, went on quite the journey and <laughs> walked to that point. As I was getting closer, I kind of like slowed down. And it was like I was in my own movie. I was in my own music video <laughs> in that moment. And I started walking really slow and I, when I got to this, you know, because at this point, how many times do we have an experience of openness and then we create a story as to how that happened? Oh, it was because of yep. this. It was because of what I, yeah. I, I, I ingested. It was because of what uh, I was feeling. It was because of the thought I had. It was because of the stars were aligned in a particular way. It was because, and mm. those things can all, you know, have their, 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 their place and, and their support in, um, in the various experiences of our lives. But the good thing about this particular invitation and this particular reality is that none of those things need apply. <laughs> and all of them are welcome. <laughs> so when I stepped on that point, nothing happened. And I literally went and walked backwards and did a back take and then I moved forward again <laughs> and I've moved on to that point and nothing happened. And I felt, I immediately felt like the surge of, of, of frustration and, and stress and disappointment. And, you know, wow, you know, you just took this huge trip and, 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 and you know, maybe you're chasing a ghost, you know, what's maybe, maybe that, that unshakableness, maybe, maybe you had some kind of mini stroke. I mean, I had all these various thoughts in my head and, um, and, and I'm like, nothing. And then I just sat there and I'm just like, nothing happened. And then I said, nothing happened again. And when I said nothing happened this third time, it hit me like a gong. I was like, nothing <laughs> happened. Nothing happened. Nothing <laughs> happened. It was just this wondrous moment of like, yes, that's what I wanted. Nothing. And guess what? That's what happened. 
to the point where nothing else happened. Nothing has happened so, so, so truly that nothing has happened. <laughs> and, 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 and that openness revealed itself and the openness revealed itself to not have gone anywhere. You know, it was like so clear that I could see that I was just emphasizing my story as opposed to what the story is appearing in and that that openness was present every moment of my life, every, every lifetime, any, 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 any thought I can have, any image I can, I can muster of, of me being somewhere, uh, that me is something that's more like a mirage that comes and goes. But this moment is here, stable, present, available, bright, and delighted with whatever's appearing. <laughs> Wow, there's so much I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, what struck out to me most was the sense of like, there's the sense of like, the cause. What's the cause of this awakening? Yeah. What's the cause of this awakening of consciousness? And how do I keep reproducing that through going to that yeah. you know, the cause and effect thing? Yeah. And it's like, that's the very thing you realize that actually keeps you from awakening to this essence that's, First of all, I think the thing to realize is it's always here right now, yeah. right? And it's never not here right now. It's you. You are it. Yeah. It is you. So all you're, all you're looking for is yourself. So if you're trying to find the cause of yourself, I mean, just to say it sounds so silly, it's but tough. like, yeah. you know, that's what we do. Like, what's the cause of myself? Well, there is no cause of yourself. You, you are yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but in the mind, yeah. we're like. How do I make some kind of effort to get to the space of, of awakening? Yes. And it was actually with my son, Gio. Um, he, when he was younger, we were, we were pulling up to my, to his grandparents' house uh -huh. at the time. And he was like trying to articulate to me how he had this, you know, he didn't have all the language, but he had this like profound experience of everything. He was like, there's this all light and everything oh, is just so like it. bright. And uh -huh. there's this light everywhere. And, um, he, he said, I don't know what to call it. So I call it the Frasia. I just made up this word, the Frasia. <laughs> and he said, he said it, just, yeah. it just, sometimes it just happens, you know? And then we went for a walk and we were talking about it. And he said something that I thought was really profound. He said, well, if I try to make it happen, it won't happen. Amen. <laughs> he said, it's only if I'm not, if I'm not trying that's when it happens. I love it. I love it. Yes. That's so, so wise from the mouth of babes. I love it. Wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's true, true. It's, it's so Please. interesting. It's like how many stories need to be upheld to, to, to be in the space of you having to try to make something happen? You know, how many concepts are you... Uh, are you confirming? Or are, you, are, you, are you breathing life into... To believe that here you are and something else is somewhere else and that you need to do what you need to do to, to, to bring it about or to evoke it or make it happen. It's so interesting. And in that very um, trance of, of, of all the attention on these stories, the simplicity of what has never once moved, <laughs> what is beautifully still and present gets overlooked, simply gets overlooked. Yeah. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, I call it like a re-anchoring. So like uh -huh. you're anchored in like the story yes. and who I am. And this is, you know, you call it sometimes the weather. Okay. You know, like, now the uh -huh. <laughs> now there's sunshine, now it's snowing, now there's a hurricane. Yeah. And we get so caught up in that and we lose the essence of who we really are. This essence that's, that's deeper than the weather or like a different example is like the, the ocean, you know, you have the, uh -huh. the surface where it can be yes. turbulent and it can be, um, or, or it can be more gentle, but yes. at, the, at the, at the floor, it's always still. And we lose that essence of who we are. So it's like <clears throat> through this awakening, we're like kind of anchoring into who we really are. And this other part is still there. This, mm. this ever changing, uh, weather, right. The flavor that's ever changing, but, but it's kind of it's it's not who we it's not where we're anchored. Does that does that resonate? Yeah. For yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of times you don't know that that the option to live as the sky, for example, as opposed to living as as the weather or something 
um, are hiding from the weather or trying to avoid the weather or trying to change the weather, uh, we don't notice that that's an option. And so I think it's really cool with the work that you're doing, the work that, that I love to share and, and that so many people all over the world, you know, and this invitation has been around for a long time, is that the option exists to recognize that you are not limited to the thought of who you are. You're not limited to the thought of who the, where, the, where you are or what you are or where the planet is or that there is even such a thing as a planet or such a thing as a human <laughs> being or such a thing as, a, as, as, as someone that's alive, separate than life itself. And, and, and that there, it's possible to, to discover a depth of, some, uh, of this immediate aliveness that is so naturally here. And, and that has always been here. You can live from that place. You can send emails from that place. You can do interviews from that place. You can make love from that place. You can create from that place. You can eat your food from that place. You can, you know, you could, you could be human being from the space of beingness itself. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah, <laughs> and what's, what's, what's so beautiful is like, you can experientially feel the opening right now. Like I can feel yeah. the experience opening right now. So yeah. There's, you know, there's like things banging and things going on behind you, but yeah. like there's this essence that's like transcends that. Um, yeah. That's, it's not, it's not something that's based on, oh, if I get enough information or if I gather enough facts, yeah. then I'll get to this place. Yeah. Right. Which, which the mind wants to try to make it into that. Yeah. It's here right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, always the mind always trying to figure something out. The mind always trying to uh, perpetuate its existence. Uh, and, and, and it's so fascinating to stop for a moment. So I invite everyone watching right now just to um, pause for a moment and notice the contents of your mind. So easy to notice what you're thinking, what thoughts are coming up, the images that may be appearing to notice, you know, what may be, one may be experiencing with the body, various sensations, temperature-wise, a little ache here, a little sensation there, a little warmth here, a little, uh, to notice the different various feelings that may be arising, and, and to notice that all of these things are appearing in and, and, and exist due to the power of this presence, this aware immediacy, this all outshining brightness and it's simply a matter of becoming accustomed to what's obvious you know as as soon as i discovered this it was just like i couldn't shake it even more it was just so obvious that everything is so allowed to be itself so obvious that in discovering that who i am is freedom itself it's not limited to me being someone that's free it's the celebration and the discovery that oh everything's free including our thoughts mind is free to be itself Pain is free to be itself. Suffering is free to be itself. People are free to be themselves. The world is free to be itself. And it's, 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 it's so beautiful. It's really sweet. Mm. Totally beautiful. Um, it's also not the way I hear, I don't know if it's most, but certainly many people talking about spirituality. There's kind of like, yeah. you know, this is the positive, this is the negative, yeah. these are the good thoughts, these yeah. are the bad thoughts. Um, this is what's like divine. This is what's evil. Yeah. And we have to try to like get rid of these like bad things, these negative things, these evil things yeah. and like go into the good things. And a lot of people are really like struggling with that. Even like, um, I feel like some, some friends that we know that are spiritual teachers really create this thing of like, you have to feel joy all the time. And if you don't feel this all the time, yeah. then something's wrong with you. Yeah. And, and so like you're, 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 um, you're, there's actually a line in one of your songs that you wrote. If it's appearing in your consciousness, then simply say yes. So, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Notice what's always saying yes. <laughs> and of course, it doesn't mean that we need to always say yes to certain things. Someone has a has a has a chainsaw wants to cut off your pinky toe. You don't got to say yes. <laughs> you can say no. You can say yes to your pinky toe. <laughs> it's like no, I'm gonna say yes to the continuing existence of my pinky toe attached to what I call my body. You know, it's, it's, it's wonderful that there is a, a yes, there is a presence that welcomes all, a presence that allows for all to exist. I love it. It's, uh, you know, it allows for everything to have a full life. And in allowing everything to have a full life, this presence, this moment allows for everything to have an honorable death. 
because what comes will go. A good uh, clue that something is going to go is if it appears to appear here that it's, it's that's never been here before. <laughs> She's like, you better stay away from my toe. Okay, Robin. <laughs> so cute. Um, so yeah, what 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 appears to have, to have appear freshly and new it's good to know that it will go it kind of reminds me of like waking up and and and, and having an enlightenment experience um i love this story about someone going to papa g who is a beloved uh teacher um beloved reflection beloved uh presence of this moment given the invitation to discover be in the moment um He's no longer in body, but he was in India. He's uh, Gangaji's teacher. Gangaji, a powerful, spiritual, uh, non-dualist non teacher here in, in, in the States. Um, but uh, someone went up to Papaji and one of his like satsangs, his meetings, and said, Yo, Papaji, I'm so excited. I, I woke up. I'm awake. I'm free. I, I, I've realized the reality of who I am. And Papaji's like, oh, that's wonderful. Yay, 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 yay. And then their face shifted and their energy shifted. And they're like, but I lost it. But I lost it. I can't remember. <laughs> right. I had right. that moment. I knew that everything was one. I knew that we was all connected. I knew that only love was real. And now I lost it. I, I lost it. I lost it. And he looked at Papaji, and Papaji had a, an even bigger smile and said, ah, even better, even better, even better. You know, the good news about having a powerful experience is that it will go. And the moment that it goes can bring us a little closer to discovering the simplicity of what isn't in the realm of comings and goings, the simplicity and the stability of this unwavering suchness. And then to discover that that is who we are. That's what is, that's what's here. <laughs> I think that's, that's huge. I wanna say to the people, mm -hmm. uh, some people tuning in, uh, just keep sharing your comments. We'll, we'll get to them shortly and we'll look at some of them and respond. If you have any questions, uh, please share questions and, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to them. Um, but we got something juicy happening right here. We're juicy, with juicy, it. juicy. Um, so, um, yeah, the sense of ex spiritual experience. This is like a huge thing, I feel like. This thing of like, I had, first of all, the statement, I had a spiritual experience. That whole, that whole statement is false on every <laughs> single level. There's nothing true about it at all. You didn't have a spiritual experience. There's also things as a spiritual experience. It, it, the whole thing is an illusion, you know? But then people are trying to like reproduce it like you did in your journey. Yeah. And I, I, I had that experience and it's nothing, nothing wrong with it, right? It's a beautiful part of the yeah. journey. But you, this this self realization is not an experience. That's like that's the big shift, you know. Yeah. So that and I think that's kind of like what I was kind of communicating with you a little bit yesterday when we were talking on the phone is like there's a sense for me of like experience isn't actually that interesting anymore. It is interesting in the sense of it's here, uh -huh, uh -huh, but there's, uh -huh. not, there's not the sense of like, kind of like this big different, oh, chase this experience, get away from this experience. Yeah. Yes. It's like, there's something that under underlies the experience. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like there's this light behind me right now. And it's like, there's that light that underlies the experience. Yes. Right? Yes. And with experience, you know, it, 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 from the perspective of what we've been trained, how we've been trained to experience the moment, how we've been trained to experience the world, through the lens of duality, through the lens of good and bad, through the lens of, 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 of you know, moving towards pleasure and keeping away pain. Um, experience is, is, is vital because it, it, it could do one of two things. It could, it could bring about pleasure or bring about pain. So, but yes, when you recognize this ground of being that is well-being itself, that is peace itself, that is joygasms itself, that is life itself, then yeah, experience as phenomena loses its 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 um its uh its its hugeness. Uses uses loses its capacity to be a huge factor in who you are and how you're showing up. And not that it's not that things become dull and it's the opposite. I mean, it's like everything is delicious, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. interested in positive, negative and neutral. I don't, I don't uh, spend my days sorting out what's negative, what's positive. And, you know, it's just like, there is a, 
a brightness. And the more we recognize this brightness, get familiar with this brightness, it outshines all of these various experiences. Yeah. And the brightness is here. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I was thinking of a couple of songs that you that you wrote. Uh -huh. that be, I think it'd be great to kind of touch on. I just I just mentioned one line. We already go, if ever, if it's appearing in your consciousness, simply say yes. I think that's okay. Really yes, yes, uh, yes. And 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 the lyrics. That the, is another song. Uh -huh. Well, I was just gonna say the the verses of that song. That song I wrote with a dear friend of mine from Sweden named Mira Linda Hawkinson. Um, we met in Ecuador when we, I was on tour there and, and we were performing with Dr. Masuru Imoto, who does the messages from water, amazing gift. You know, his contribution was amazing to our planet. Um, but we were sitting, you know, it was before we were going to do a concert and it was just interesting to me, all the emphasis on trying to move towards something and keep something away. And, and so this song was, was an invitation of recognizing, you know, saying yes to that which isn't, isn't, isn't in the realm of, of, of these things that come and go, or is in the realm of, of someone somewhere. And so the first verse is something like, um, uh, I am God, all is one, the totality of existence pales in comparison to what's never been said. I feel so good, I feel so free, I feel so connected, pales in comparison to what's never been felt. Yes, yes, yes. If I'm appearing in your consciousness, it's to simply say yes. A sacred place, a holy stone to raise my vibration pales in comparison to what they appear in. Um, a silly song with silly words, eating your attention pales in comparison to what never what's never been sung, yes, yes, yes. So it's, it's fun to feel into uh, the, the, the simplicity of what's always here and naturally here, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, there's another song that you- Which one? I've always loved this, I've always loved this song, <laughs> uh, First Time. First Time. The song First Time. Oh, yay. I love that. That's a song I could talk about like three hours. Oh, I it love that. And what, what it opens up. That see, you talk about um, that song. I need to give myself a rose spritz moment. Lord have mercy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what's fun maybe with that just, song? You... I'll sing a little bit. What's fun with that song was you know yeah, having maybe this, just like the chorus. Sure, having this profound openness, and then music coming through and lyrics coming through. And also being a part of a culture where I grew up listening to Boys to Men and Stevie Wonder and, and, and Marvin Gaye. And, and so, so wanted to include uh, this vastness into, into melodies and language that, that maybe can, can, can land in the hearts of people in a beautiful way. So the chorus of the song says, mm -hmm. I'm learning to forget, to forget I ever saw your face To forget, to forget I ever heard your name To forget the soul that's in your eyes So it can always always be the first time it can always be the first time i'm gonna forget everything i think i know about you so when i look at you it's gonna be the first time so something like that <laughs> first time <laughs> i think that that's that's so that's so profound that song you know the sense of it, it starts off, I'm learning to forget I ever saw your face. So yes. it sounds, to, to the average person, it like sounds this. like horrible. Like, like, I hate this person. I hope I never see them again. They're uh -huh. despicable. They've, they've wronged me. They've, yeah. they've, 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 they've um, whatever, you know, they've abused yeah. me, whatever. Yeah. So, um, but it's actually something so much more deeper and profound than that. It's yeah. the sense of like, I love you so much that I always want to see you like I'm seeing you for the first time. It almost yeah. like, almost brings like tears in my eyes like feeling oh, like because i know mm -hmm. that feeling you know and i think that's the feeling that we all want to be in you yeah. know ideally with everyone 
but it's yeah. so it's so difficult for us as human beings. Yeah. And why is it so difficult for us? Why, why is that such a challenge for us? But <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so trained. With that, right? We're so trained. It's amazing. We're so trained to 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 believe our thoughts. We're so trained to put things into into um things we can understand. We're so trained to label things. We're so trained to 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 feel safe by using um uh words and and language and and descriptions it's like if i know that i'm here and that i'm on a planet and that i'm breathing and that you are you and that you like this and you like that and you don't like this and you don't like that and and you know uh this is how you act and this is how you don't act and then we 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 move into the space of thinking we know what other people are thinking and assuming what other people are thinking assuming how they're acting it's like we you know dust starts to form we may have a moment of pure love and open vast i love you forever and if there isn't a vigilance or there isn't an education in how the mind works and and mind's capacity to sneak in and start covering your beloved with your label so it's it's it turns into where you no longer see them you're just seeing your thought about them you're just seeing your judgment about them you're just seeing it's just a relationship with mind and mind the only thing that has a problem with mind is mind the only thing that has a problem with ego is ego and 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 because we we don't have an education in recognizing that tendency and that capacity uh we just get caught up in 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 in, in not seeing our our beloved so this song was kind of like a a a way of inviting the option of seeing your beloved for the first time you know uh honoring all the things you know about them and celebrate all the, your stories about them i mean gosh how what else do we know about each other but our stories but to also include uh the capacity to take a break from your from your projections and your stories and your ideas and just be with each other nakedly not just physically nakedly but but conceptually nakedly for a moment you know see each other from the brightness of the soul and it's it's good medicine. <laughs> yeah, I think it's so be- it's so I think a common word I'm saying today is beautiful. Yay. It's so beautiful. Love that word. Uh it's 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 counter than the way a lot of people the way a lot of people do things or they're interested in doing things in relationship or they think they want to do things in relationship, yeah. which I find which is why it's so interesting is the sense yeah. of like well if I know you more then then I'll then I'll love you or if I have more facts about you more you know yes. this, you know we know it has its place yes. but there's something there's something that's so much deeper than that and I've been one of the things we've been exploring the last few weeks is like long-term relationships mm-hmm. and how they're very difficult for people mm-hmm. and they're difficult because facts accumulate you know yes, yes. stories accumulate uh-huh, you know? uh-huh. Last Quite the callous. Six months ago, you did this. Yes. Six months ago, you did this. Mm-hmm. And like, I'm not mm-hmm. seeing you for the first time anymore, you know? Yes. And so it really ties into forgiveness, too. Like, you know, that innocence consciousness is also what is the essence of forgiveness, right? Yeah. Like what, is, what does forgiveness mean to you? Oh, my goodness. I mean, I love that the word exists in our, in, 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 in our species. Uh and, and and just simply from the word itself and you know from from human beings without looking at it from the from the vast consciousness perspective um it's so beautiful to forgive it's like an opportunity to give your thoughts over to something greater than yourself give your ideas over give the experience over give the circumstance over you know it's like give it to god give it to the universe give it to the angels give it to light give it to life um uh so yeah really profound really really beautiful practice and in the depths of the simplicity of, of what's here no one to forgive nothing to forgive um it's like a, a miracle that that word is even possible in the the bright hot deliciousness of this moment not separate from itself that magdi o Paulus said givenness oh, like that givenness, givenness. Is that- oh i love that hello match um, my beloved friend audrey <laughs> so many beloveds coming out match that is that is it match uh, match and then her name is audrey i want i know if, I, if i'm if i'm if i'm if i'm she kind of like batman with her alias i want to give her real name <laughs> <laughs> uh, so beautiful so, um another song 
Nobody is a victim here. Nobody is a victim song, here. Oh my god. And that feels like a we were talking about this yesterday. It feels like kind of a radical song mm-hmm. for like the kind of the phase we're in in the culture mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. So I'd love for you to speak to that. Yeah, a little bit. that song I wrote in Albuquerque. We were on tour with Here to Hear, and and we were in Albuquer- Albuquerque, New Mexico, and. I just remember, you know, for a couple of months, I was just feeling into noticing a lot of my beloveds in the conscious community really getting caught up in feeling like a victim to the government, really getting caught up in feeling like a victim to to uh, reptilians or to an outside force that is controlling their lives and controlling who they yeah. are. And, and, and in, that, in that space, you know, overlooking their power, in that space, overlooking their capacity. I mean, of course, for to, at some stage of development, that can serve as like inspiration to act and to move forward. Um, but depending on how it appears, it could also serve as a way to paralyze uh, us, a way to, to cut us off from, from a fresh, naked, spontaneous, innovative, approach to this moment responding to itself in ways that benefit all of humanity. Um, so yes, I was inspired to write a little ditty that kind of spoke to, you know, you're not a victim. No one is a victim here. In, you know, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, the bridge, it says, you're not a victim of the government, a victim of the church, not a gift, victim to the beings that contributed to your birth, not a victim of society, a victim of some reason, not a victim, not a, there ain't no victim in this place, not a victim of the rapist or the murderer or thief, not a victim to the fear that causes souls to lie and cheat, you're not a victim of your body, victim of disease, not a victim, not a victim until you believe those thoughts you think oh yeah nobody is a victim here nobody is a victim here nobody is a victim me emancipate yourself from mental slavery like Bob Marley I was watching a Bob Marley (laughs) documentary and I was so inspired by the way he chose to rise above the various things that he experienced in his life to continue being a vessel for such profound music to come through that has been such a gift to this whole planet. So I was like, yeah, bring, bring a little Bob Marley in. Um, but yeah, I was really happy for that song to come through. And, and a lot of people have been loving it. <laughs> I love you, Robbie. Yeah, it, it, and Valerie's here. I love you, Val. Hi, Val. Okay, we got Paul Malov in the house. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> There's, it's, it's interesting. It's like, what we're really pointing to is like this deep level of empowerment. Yes, right? so empowering. Empowerment, which really just means realizing who you really are. Yes. And that's like, that's a phrase we started using more like mm-hmm. in more recent years is um, empowered liberation. Yes. You know, the same yes. phrases like that. Yes, because then the question is like for a lot of people, it's like, okay, what's the use of waking up? What's the use of of discovering who I am? What's the use of diving into the depths of myself? What's the use of discovering the universe within me? And it's so powerful to recognize uh, the, the immeasurable potential to be of benefit in your life, to be a presence of that which you wish to see in the world, which is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think in um like the liberal community, which we're we're generally mostly a part of, you and I, uh-huh. it's like it's it's disappointing to see how this victim consciousness thing is like so prevalent right now and it's like edgy that's like difficult to even like yeah. get at it or talk yeah. about it or yeah. speak to it yeah. and I think what happens is people mm-hmm. think that if you speak to it then it's like then you're blaming the person themselves so it's like this duality it's either like mm-hmm. I'm a victim or I'm the blame but I think we're talking something that's beyond that whole yes. duality yes 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 absolutely uh, you know the, it, being a victim has its place. Uh, being mm-hmm. victimized has its place. Uh, the experience of, of this planet, the experience of a human being and, 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 and all the things that could happen to a human body 
and in relationships and in families and in, and in, in our cultures and in, in our, 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 our uh, whatever, you know, it, it, it has its yeah. place. It's, it's, uh, and the option to take a break from your identities, an option to take a break from your story, an option to truly be where you are, the option to really allow for the, the, the nutrients present in the identity of being a victim, the nutrients present in the identity of, of being someone that suffered a trauma or in the, this experience or that memory or that memory. There are a lot of vitamins and nutrients there that don't get, uh, that we don't extract we don't know how, we, we kind of stay in, 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 in the muck, but in our willingness to open and our willingness to be here nakedly and our willingness to not have to know who we are, where we are, what's going on, what isn't going on, am I this, am I that, am I a victim, am I victorious, am I, am I, but just to be present. Uh, all of these things can, can all the, the, the juice and the vitamins of these things can get extracted and can show up in ways that are really unique and, and, and beneficial to, to not just us, but to our families, our communities, our, our world. So there is something to these things, but you're not limited to them. You're not bound by them. And you are most certainly, yeah, you're free, you're free. <laughs> <laughs> Of like being aware of both levels, right? Like the level of the relative, and then the and the, and the deeper level of the yeah, absolute. So yeah. it's like acknowledging that yes, on this level, this is what happened, and this mm -hmm. is what I felt. Mm -hmm. This was this wasn't you know right or just what happened. Yeah. But there's this deeper level where I'm free, and I'm I'm timelessly yeah. timelessly free, which you're, yeah. you are. Yeah. And then how cool. I like that. You know what I thought was so powerful about that was just seeing it in my own life how um, allowing myself to be free gave me a whole other perspective and the different things that I've survived, the different experiences that I've had. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, I, I, I'm at the feet of those moments. I'm at the feet of, you know, my father being diagnosed with AIDS when I was 12 years old and all the, all the, the, the suffering and the pain that was there. I'm at the feet of, of any time I was taken advantage of by an adult or any time I was taken advantage of by a business or music company when I was in the noodle. It's like all these things are, are reveal themselves to be fertilizers, some really good fertilizer, you know, some really good support uh, fanning the flame of, of the phoenix that we are, the, the blossom that we are, the freedom that we are. It's so cool. Yeah, I mean that's the, the, you know like you you've experienced. Um, I think people can listen to somebody and they can say, well, well, they haven't experienced anything that's like hard, yeah. difficult, but like, and you don't you don't dwell on it, but you you have experienced a lot of difficult things. Yeah. In your life. Yeah. Um, but in your case, like, yeah, I like this term of like the fertilizer. Yeah. Like using it as fertilizer, right? It's Sometimes like I had take this the shit that made the flowers grow. <laughs> It's everything can be a catalyst for our awakening, right? When we yeah. really have that intention, to, everything can be a catalyst to remind us who we really are. Everything can be a signpost yes. to recognize and remind us who we really are beyond the story. Yes, beyond the story. yes, it's amazing. Yeah. Everything can serve. Beautiful. Everything does serve. And I think mm -hmm. it's, I think it's important to say that like this has nothing. This doesn't diminish compassion or empathy, no. right? It actually really should amplify it. You know, yeah, there's a sense of compassion empathy for everyone yeah you know, in any situation yeah. always yeah a deep sense of compassion and a deep sense of availability you know it's 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 you really you really get to be available you really get to be a presence of support and it's and it's not contrived it's genuine and real mm -hmm. yeah. beautiful yeah. Let's see what people are saying. People are talking about shit. <laughs> that shit I gotta love that shit. And then we yeah. enjoy. Gotta love that shit. Hello, Oliver. I love you. And Robin and Amana. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe if there, anyone has any questions at this point or anything they'd like to share.
Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I'm just going through some of the comments. Okay, I cool. I haven't seen any of um, How Robin says, allowing, like, how can I possibly control all these dust particles? I love I that. I know. Okay, then. Fly around dust particles. I'll just let you. <laughs> I'll just let you. I like that. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good analogy. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of comments here. Appreciate everyone sharing and contributing. What are you doing these days, Ash? What's happening? What's the life for you? What would you like people to know uh, that you're getting into? Yeah. Oh, we're talking about we talk about doing a retreat together again. Yes, I would love that. We've done uh, we've done a few retreats together in the past. I just put this post up because it was an app. It was three years. You know, Facebook does that three years ago today. I know. I love it. So um, we were in Boulder doing a retreat first week in April three years ago today. three years ago really great memory of like, what a, that was such an amazing retreat it was beautiful really, yeah and Boulder is such a wonderful retreat. setting <laughs> yeah. or something like that yeah. it was amazing so I'm excited yeah. for us to do another one we don't know the details yeah. yet but we'll let y'all know <laughs> as soon as we have yeah. it <laughs> yeah I love doing this, retreats this with, first... with others you know with, with yeah uh, I love the whole community aspect of it mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about how there's this shift. Um, would you call it the guru rock star paradox? That's what my friend so, Lexi calls it. My friend, my okay, friend Lexi. Alexis, King Lexi. Yes. <laughs> guru rock star paradox. So, kind of shifting out of this, um, this, this sense of the spiritual teacher guru as somebody separate from the world, the humanity. Um, feels like really valuable, really important. I think we're both like dedicated to, to that of like this yeah. kind of sense of awakening to the absolute essence and also this deepening sense of human humanity and humanness. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's this idea, you know, coming from, it's like there's still this, this, uh, this you know, still caught up in this trance of duality of, of me separate from God, me separate from life, me separate from the guru, me separate from the teacher. Me needing to get the transmission, me needing to get the, um, the transmission. And, and it's, 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 it's really wondrous. It has its place. It's romantical. It's adventurous. It, 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 can, it can allow for all kinds of drama that's very entertaining and wonderful. Um, and also, I feel that something else is emerging, you know, as we're discovering that, you know, when we talk about oneness, when we talk about wholeness, when we talk about, uh, love and peace and wisdom it's not it's it's distributed equally you know it's like i love the word that is really popular in, in, in buddhism called you know equanimity it's like this equanimity is real and there is immense power and wisdom and love and clarity and brightness in every human being equally distributed <laughs> And our, you know, this, this tendency to put people on pedestals and then to knock them off pedestals, this tendency to, yeah. to uh, you know, it's like that we can, we can relax that and maybe explore another, uh, an, another way of, 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 of interacting with ourselves and, and, and with each other. And so I'm excited to see how things like retreats and workshops, you know, evolve as we discover that we're all wisdom keepers, we're all teachers we're all students we're all learning we're all you know a lot of times in these guru rock star paradigms um it's it happens so much where these gurus get unchecked you know it's like they're only surrounded by followers they're only surrounded by people that are kissing their feet they're only surrounded by people that are saying you can do no wrong they're only surrounded by people and 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 and, and it's and it's it's it's, it's a two-way street you know, it's, it's, it, they perpetuate this notion that if I do anything, uh, even if I do something horribly wrong, it's for the grace of all, it's for the good of all. And that's where you kind of move into the space of, you know, enlightened ego, uh, you know, um, and, uh, maybe a sincere, genuine awakening that has now been co-opted, that has now been uh, taken over by, by, you know, an uninvestigated, you know, by believing one's own mythology. And, and it's really, really fascinating, you know, that whole thing and how it's still happening, still going on. But I think more and more people, and you beloveds that are watching this right now, give me some hearts, give me some likes. I think more and more the community is looking to, to, to not have it be so fo focused with just one being, you know, have it 
really be about community, really be about uh, presence and oneness and, 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 and equality. Uh, yeah. If you do have a guru and you are in love with a guru, that's a very special relationship. This is not anti-guru. This is about inviting the, the exploration and celebrating that it's emerging, because it is emerging, this other option where it's not focused on one person being the source of anything. <laughs> yeah, I think that it's like the, the word that comes again is empowerment. I think we're, yes. we're really pointing people to recognize that all they're looking for lies within themselves. Yes. And someone can definitely be a reflection to yes. we'll use the term confirmation. You know, yes. to confirm, like yes. you've been a great reflection for me over the years. Yay. Actually, you've been a tremendous reflection for me yeah. to see myself, recognize who I really am in the yeah. absolute essence. Yeah. Um, and I realized that it's not in you, it's it's the essence, it's it's, it's yeah. everywhere, Yeah. right? So yeah. I think it's great to acknowledge and be grateful for people that are signposts for us or opening to us, but to, to realize that what all they're doing is reflecting back to us what's ultimately who yes. we really are, so. Yes, yeah, what's naturally present. And I love the word reflection and it's even closer than reflection. Yeah, it's like this is your very self with yourself. Yeah, so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I asked you what's happening right now. If you want to share anything, and then I got so excited about it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So uh, I'm doing some shows with Menudo, which I'm really excited about, and with MDO. So MDO and Menudo pretty much the same. At one point, Menudo changed his name to MDO. Um, but I'm doing these 90, 90s pop tours. Uh, I'll be doing two shows in Mexico in April and two shows in Mexico in May. Um, uh, we're doing arena concerts, so it's, it's so wonderful to step out on stage where there's about 20,000, 30,000 beloveds. And even if I'm singing lyrics that aren't necessarily satsang or spiritual or whatnot, it doesn't matter. It's like so beautiful to recognize that everything is satsang now. Everything is spirit now. Everything is, is, is spiritual. Totally everything is light now. Yeah. And to just stand there with whatever song I'm singing and just feel such love for these beings, all of these beings, and to feel that reciprocated and to have the reciprocation and the giving of that dissolve into just the joy of the moment um so that's super exciting um we're also doing a 40-year anniversary tour with menudo i i was one years old when the group started you know menudo was like a conveyor belt of latin teen boys as soon as you were too old you were out and a new kid was in out in out in wax on wax off and and so so we're celebrating 40 years of this music menudo's sold over 60 million albums it's sung in like seven different languages. Uh, you know, it's this phenomena. So I'm really delighted and honored to participate in this, in this, uh, in this, in this world tour that we're going to do, celebrating the 40 years of Menudo. And I'm doing stuff with Here to Hear, my beloved brothers of Here to Hear, Alex and Jamie. Um, you know, we're we're exploring recording a new album. We've I've, we've written some new songs and we've started some recordings. Um, which the concept still hasn't come together as of yet, but I'm excited for that to happen. And um, we're doing, we're, we're going to perform in Unity Village in September for Silent Unity. Uh, it's, it's a day of, of, of prayer, um, the National Day of Prayer. Um, Michael Beckwith is one of the is one of the keynote speakers. Um, that's going to be really powerful. I love Unity. I love Unity Village. Um, I love Agape. I love Michael Beckwith. Um, I love the New Thought Movement, Center for Spiritual Living. It's wonderful. Uh, and I'm doing a retreat with my dear friend Elizabeth Longo, Unity of Fort Lauderdale, is having a retreat um, in May, the beginning of May. Um, and it's, it's going to be at the Duncan Center, and I'm going to be there as a presence of support and co-facilitating to some degree with my beloved Elizabeth Longo. And yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just yummy. It's yummy, yummy, yummy. I'm, I'm, I'm always, uh, I love living in the yes more. So excited for life to show up in really beautiful ways to, to continue sharing and, and, and confirming what is. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> Got a comment here. Hi, Ash. Hi, Brian. It fills my heart with more love for my first act back on fb yeah. to be watching you both sharing your love with us Aww. it has been many years since i have spoken with either of you 
it feels like a wonderful sign to return and have this conversation to be the welcoming experience. Much love to you both. Uh, fully received. Yeah. <laughs> and much love Thank to you. you. <laughs> Hello there, love. <laughs> Well, this is amazing. This is, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful and appreciative to, to share this space with you and share it with everyone that's been tuning in and a lot more people will tune in after on the replay. Yes. Um, but, uh, hello just now so much and hello and now. Yeah. So much love and appreciation for you and which is really me and your <laughs> presence in my life and I'm so grateful for our friendship. And, I'm so grateful. Uh, and I love you. Yeah. It's so wonderful. I love that we get to love each other as vast, immediate, immeasurable myself. And we get to love each other as, as the human beings and, and with our families and with our genetics and with our divinity and our absurdities and the hilarious. And, the, you know, it, it is, is really rich and, 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 and powerful. And I love that, I get, that we get to have this friendship. Really appreciate you, Brian. Yes. Yeah. And really appreciate, appreciate you yourself. <laughs> See you soon in the next now. Yay. See everyone. And I just want to just share, um, if anyone's curious about interacting in any more ways, you can go to my website, www.ashruiz.com. Delighted to, to, to serve as, as, a, as a coach, as a, as a, sometimes as a joyologist or as a self-realization mentor. <laughs> Is empoweredliberation.com, is that still your site? Um, I changed it over to ashruiz.com. I merged okay. the music well, with Ashruiz. the teaching. Yeah. Okay, Ashruiz. so I'll put that one down there for folks. Ashruiz.com, but obviously if you know his name, which is in there, then you can just put .com and it'll <laughs> yes, take you there. it'll take you there. And but okay. bye, beloved you, Madge and Amana and Robin, okay. everyone that tuned in, Robbie, Oliver, such a joy, such a joy. All right. That was really fun. Really glad we did we were able to do that. That's one of my favorite people in the world. Thank you all so much for being here, for being a part of this. Um, replays for all these are available now. We kind of took it to the next level in the last month. Um, so I'm having guests on every, every week, every Tuesday, 11.30 a.m. Next week, Valerie Tignini will be joining us, another beautiful being, talking about um, Kundalini Awakening that she had, amongst other things. Uh, you can also check this on SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, Facebook. Love you. See you in the next now.